This is an FSP Hexa 85 plus uh, PC power supply, uh, 350 watt rated, a single 12 volt rail with uh, uh, DC to DC converters for the low voltage rails, uh, and it's 80 plus bronze rated. And this is one of my new server power supplies. Uh, part of the reason I got this was they bragged about using all Japanese uh, electrolytic capacitors, which uh, Seems to be the case, although they've kind of cheated, and we'll see that in a bit. Uh, we're going to be taking this thing apart, uh, not only to see the innards, uh, because it seems to be a decent power supply, but also because we need more wiring. The application I need it for requires a bunch of Molexes, and we have a grand total of two. So we have a donor. Uh, this is actually the original. A uh, power supply which came with a server case this thing is going to go into and this has a bunch of lovely old quality Molex connectors on nice 18 gauge wire which is going to be perfect for powering the hard drives this server supply is going to be powering. So we're going to be bringing out the soldering iron after we bring out the screwdriver to void the warranty and get inside this thing. Okay, and we're inside, so let's have a closer look and see how they've cheated us. And we seem to have a grand total of two electrolytic capacitors, a big primary side cap, which is indeed a Rubicon, and a... No, we've got three, uh, a couple of tiny ones here on the secondary side. Uh, no, these are on the primary side actually, but no matter, they are brand name caps. However, uh, the rest of the capacitors in this device are polymer caps. And if we look real close up on these, caps on, these are cheapo caps, probably out of focus, cheapo caps, but they do say caps on right there. And uh, that's the case for all the blue ones. Got some on the, on the regulator board there, DC DC board couple of cap -xons. and we've also got a bunch down by the wiring loom. Uh, red ones, I don't know what they are, probably more cap -xon and more blue ones which are actually labelled as such. And out of focus, but oh well. So, while this power supply does provide us with 100% Japanese electrolytics, it does not provide us with 100% Japanese capacitors, which is... Mm, mm. Uh, however, the fact that these polymer caps are not Japanese is not as big of a deal as the electrolytics, because frankly, I have never seen a Capxon polymer fail uh, due to wear, so I'm not too worried. Uh, they're probably specified for 2000 hours to load live, and, and they're probably going to exceed that, so I'm not too worried. There's also a very efficient power supply, you know, 80 plus bronze, so it's not going to run awfully hot either, as long as it doesn't clog up. Or, as long as our amazing Yateloon sleeve bearing fan isn't going to fail. So the fan they have used is the same fan that all the cheaper power supplies use, a Yateloon DS D12SH-12, 300 milliamp, 12 volt, Standard issue cheapo fan. This is the fan that always makes the horrible crunching noise in cheap power supplies once they get a couple of years old. So I wonder how they're trying to get away with a five year warranty stated uh, shipping them with these fans because these fans are very known to fail if they're installed in a horizontal position. Vertically, not so bad. Horizontally, pretty much 100% failure rate historically, but who knows, maybe 8 Loon have. Uh, fixed their bearings and they're fine now. But yeah, that's it for the real quality assessment. Uh, I don't really care what brands the semiconductors are. I haven't been able to see any brands on any of them, so they're probably uh, pretty anonymous, probably. But then again, the big chip manufacturers tend to be well priced on actual big discrete semiconductors, so I would not. I wouldn't fault the reliability of this paper. I, I don't think this is going to be 
a bad unit we have also a nice uh, filtering and active pfc circuitry all that fine stuff so with that out of the way let's get on to the fun stuff and bring over the soldering iron because we've got some wires to install all right and there we have the power supply taken apart and we've also ripped the wiring loom out of the old server supply uh, so the underside of the page supply reveals uh, nothing too exciting it's pretty typical standard uh, standard compliant and so forth decent soldering quality uh, some hand touch-ups there right in the middle of the frame nothing too bad looking pretty okay for the most part i don't mind this at all uh, so to add these wires uh, we do get since it's the lowest power 350 watt model in the range uh, we have a few of these holes here which uh, allow we can just to uh, shove our wires through this is going to be the 12 volts uh, we have a hole for the 5 volt down here somewhere and this is going to be our grind uh, so we're just going to solder in our wires there no splicing involved no nothing it's going to be quite neat and tidy uh, we can really see uh, how the quality of wiring on a proper server supply is much better than the wiring getting a consumer supply however uh, just as a curiosity we can compare our the wiring for our new power supply with our old so this is your standard issue molex connector on the consumer power supply uh, the wiring is the american wire gaze 20 which is not very thick uh, this is going to have significant voltage drop if you uh, try to power on a bunch of hard drives at the same time because well it's built to handle a maximum of two devices and well a floppy uh, nothing wrong with this really uh, as far as being inadequate for our, our, our application. So if we put that aside and have a look at the old server wiring, we will notice two differences. Primarily that otherwise our American wire gauge 18, which is significantly thicker. And if you look closely, our 12 volt rail has individual wires running to the power supply. You have one green wire that's not going by the other connectors. So for the 12 volt rail between these two plugs, we essentially have twice as much wire as uh, the consumer plug, allowing uh, more current to be drawn with less voltage drop. And that's a very good thing. And this double plug is the same story. 18 gauge wire and uh, dual 12 volt wires. I think there were 12 volt wires anyway, I hope so. I <laughs> haven't actually checked since this, is, this stuff isn't actually a color code standardized as uh, the other one is. We don't have a yellow wire, we just have the red and black ones, but I'm going to assume they're correct. Going to have to double check before soldering it in though. And yes, if we hold the plugs up next to each other, we can see that the green wire corresponds to the yellow one. So that's a 12 volt that's doubled up on the server supply good that's what we want i don't see why they would have done it any other way and there we go we're all mounted back together with our new wiring loom installed so there's just one final modification to do to this power supply before we put it in service and that is to get rid of the noise maker and just install anything ball bearing if you say a gentle typhoon fan it's got some waiting to it to reduce the motor noise uh, these are somewhat loud, loudly driven fans but they are ball bearing they have a very high static pressure uh, for their uh, uh, class and they are excellent uh, server fans for home use so that guy's gonna go there on these uh, second hand Adele uh, rubber grommets ah there you go that's a new and improved FSP Hex 85 Plus 350 Watt power supply that's uh, hopefully going to provide us with many years of reliable service with our lovely new old school, uh, new old school, that's a new thing, uh, quad Molex connectors. 
So I'm going to have to thank you for watching and make sure you enjoy yourself.